Before we get in this video, I'd like to give a great big shout out and thank you so, so much to an amazing sister for a renewed mind. Bless her heart, she's been watching the videos and complimenting, complimenting on them and everything. She has a channel of her own and she is absolutely amazing. I just absolutely love her to death. One of these days, I want to meet her and give her a great big old hug. She's a good sister in Christ, and she's just an amazing lady all around with a heart of gold. So be sure to head over there and subscribe. Her link will be in the description box below. God bless. Mr. Jerry, my father and I have been watching your videos for a while now. And we wanted to thank you so, so much for incorporating our black history and heritage into your Appalachian videos. We thought you'd enjoy this story about one of our ancestors. It's a story that our great granddaddy told us growing up about a righteous man from Appalachia, a man named Joe, who folks thought was crazy, but he battled something evil using the word of God. Great granddaddy always said that Joe was born in West Virginia and he worked for the B and O Railroad for quite a while. Said he was a drinker and a sinner. But you couldn't talk him into going to preaching. But he had an injury out there on the yard one day when he was at work that almost took his young life. He said he seen a bright light and heard a heavenly voice that said, not yet, go back, Joe. And he woke up. From that day forward, he devoted his entire life to the good Lord above. He quit his life of sin, all that foolishness, and moved up into the mountains. And every step he made, he carried the Holy Bible with him. Well, as time went on, he started getting a little older. He was basically like a nomad in his 40s. So he just stayed up there in the hills and prayed. Said the Lord sent him up there for a reason. Said he didn't know what that reason was. But that didn't matter. Because all he knowed is he had to do what the Lord wanted him to do. Everybody around, his kinfolk and locals around town, thought he'd lost his mind. Said, but he'd just grin at him and shake his head. Said, it didn't, you know, didn't bother him there a bit. He kept his word and kept his faith in what he was supposed to do. Stay right there at the cabin. If he ever wandered into town for supplies or anything like that, they said folks would whisper and stuff like that when he walked by. But again, he'd hold his head high and hold his Bible tight and keep on a-walking. Said he didn't pay him no mind at all. So he'd done his business and went back to the hills with his Bible. Now Granddaddy said one morning he woke up just out of the blue. So he sat straight up in the bed. He walked over to the door of his old cabin. Said he opened the door up. Said it was cloudy outside. Said about that time, the sun broke through and shined a ray of light right there in front of the house. Then it eased up across the porch, right in the doorway, and shined right on him. Then it went back and started to shine across the yard. It made its way up toward the edge of the woods and disappeared. Said he just smiled as big as he could. 
So he grabbed his Bible, bowed his head, and said, okay, Father. He said, thank you so much for showing me. He said he grabbed his old hat, put on his overalls, and took off through across the yard toward the tree line. So he got up there, started walking through the woods. So he didn't have no earthly idea where he was going, but he knowed he had to follow his heart. So he just kept a walking. Whenever he'd get a feeling to turn, he would. If he'd get a feeling to walk straight, he'd do the same thing. Well, after a while, he come up on a clearing. Well, there set another little old cabin. And said as soon as he laid eyes upon it, said he knowed that's where he was supposed to go. Said he walked up there, walked up on the porch, and was just about to knock on the door. So when he heard screaming and all kind of commotion going on in there. Said he yelled and hollered, but nobody replied. Said he knocked and knocked and hollered, nothing. But with all the commotion going on, said he opened the door up. So there was a man and a woman. And the woman was on the floor going into fits. So then she just stopped. And just went completely catatonic. Wasn't talking. Nothing. So Joe told him, said, sorry for barging in, said, but I heard the screaming. Said it scared me half to death and thought somebody was in trouble. Said the man, said, oh, it's all right. So he understood. Said he introduced himself as Virgil. He said that was his sister, Bertha. Said he'd never been married. He said she was engaged to a man, but then he ran off with another woman. Said, so they decided to just live together. Said something happened to her years ago. She'd been gone in the head ever since. So he moved in, try to help take care of her. Said she'd go into fits, screaming, hollering, fighting, scratching, things like that. Said he had a few doctors come in and look, but nothing they could do. Which, back in, medicines, doctoring, weren't like it is today. Well, said Joe told Virgil, said, well, I know a little bit about these things. It may be able to help. Virgil said, well, do what you can. I'm out of ideas. So he told Virgil he had an idea, but just remain calm and let him work. Virgil kind of looked at him, kind of odd a minute, but he shook his head a little. So Joe said, all right. So Joe took his hat off and sat down there, turned around with his Bible. So he looked at her, lowered his brow, and says, Okay, are you ready, demon? Virgil said, Now hang on just a dang, and about that time, said about that time, that woman just floated up to her feet and was grinning. So she throwed her head back, started shaking it from side to side, talking in a language that they didn't even know. Said old Virgil about passed out, said old Joe, said didn't scare him nary bit. Said he kept his faith and stood his ground. Said he run over there to her, grabs her and takes her down, holding his Bible to her forehead and praying. Said it was like a tornado in that house. Things went a flying. Chairs went going from one side to another, going up in the air and spinning around. Said Virgil jumped up and run outside. Said Joe stayed right there, never flinched, never budged. Said this went on for two days. Joe and Virgil stayed there with her, and Joe never left her side. Said Joe, said poor old fella, said he'd just do whatever come to his head. 
because he weren't no professional at that. First time he'd ever had even, even had an encounter like that. But he had faith, and it would not be broken, not even shook. So he kept his faith in the Lord and Savior and stayed right there. Said on the third day, said it left her. Said there was a calmness around the place and around them too. The poor old Bertha, bless her heart, said she sat up, looked over at Joe, and just started crying. Said the clouds broke, the sun shined through just as bright as summer. Said old Joe, he looked at her and grinned, give her a big old hug. And he laid that Bible in her lap. Well, they said old Joe said he'd go by from time to time and he'd check on her here and there. And as time went on, they fell in love. They eventually got married and had five younglings and a whole mess of grandbabies, blessed with a whole mess of them, little angels. Now we know that the Lord works in mysterious ways. Now, about the time that that happened to Bertie, was well, the same time Joe had his accident, and that heavenly voice told him to come back and give him a mission, and he gave himself over to the Lord. <laughs> 